I love this pick. Um, JD and I on our, on our, our show this week we talked about and last year too. Look at you could look at our mock draft last year. Last year we went heavy on edge because we thought that was what we need. You know, you, you can never have too many. We always say this: you can never have too many pass rushers um, and edge rushers and young fast guys. Uh, this guy's different because this guy is something that we haven't really had before. A edge rusher who has that like tall, lanky basketball body. I mean, you watch Buffalo; they have Rousseau, who's was a former basketball player. Um, B.J. Thompson. Track star got a, a, a scholarship offer for track and basketball on top of football coming out of high school. So this guy is everything that we haven't had uh, during the Spags days, having a, a tall, lanky guy at edge and who just just, just, a, just a pass for special. So you get to the quarterback and that's it. Um, we haven't had that. Um, so B.J. Thompson, a little bit about him. Uh, uh, started his career at Baylor, then went to, to Stephen F. Austin um, at uh, 24 and a half sacks in his college career, four and a half at Baylor, uh, and then 20, uh, and then yeah, 20 in his time at Stephen F. Austin. Obviously, small school, uh, but they still play the likes of Texas Tech and some of the, some of the, 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 the Texas schools. Um, but love this pick. Um, I love the fact that we have a guy who can just get to the quarterback and doesn't really do anything else. We haven't really had that. The guy just does it. We drafted King Felix uh, day one. We drafted Carl Loftus. These are guys who are grinder types. They are, you know, they're, they're not the, they're not just, you know, pass rush specialists. This guy just does one thing, and that's it: pass rush. Uh, as far as when I get quarterback, so really happy we got that. I was really enthused by this uh, pickup. Um, uh, what do you guys uh, think about this, uh, Lance? I, I've seen you've been tweeting a lot about BJ Thompson. So, what was your? Uh, what was your grade on this one? This was another one of those guys that I was shocked fell as far as he did. And I'm not sitting here saying this guy is going to become the next Vaughn Miller by any means. But like you you mentioned something that I actually 100% agree with is that this is a situational pass rusher. Now, you guys know how much I've been preaching about edge rush and how much I want to see the Chiefs answer that in this particular draft. Not just because you lost Frank, uh, Frank Clark. Not just because Carlos Dunlop may or may not be coming back. It's the fact that you got to make sure that you can consistently get to the quarterback each and every year. We saw last year the Chiefs were second in sacks, first in quarterback pressures, third in quarterback hits. Like They were at the top of, of almost every single snap last year, and they still had room for improvement. And that was Joe Colon's first year as as the defensive line coach. Now he gets a full off season to really put the guys in place that he wants to put in there. Spags gets his fifth year as the Chiefs defensive coordinator. Him and Joe Colon get to work for that much longer together. There's more tenure there. There's more common ground and understanding between the coaching staff. Now you're going and getting guys that are supremely talented and have, like you said, one goal in mind, and that's just get to the quarterback. And I love the fact that the Chiefs in their first five picks went defensive end, or edge rush rather, two times. Now, obviously, FAU is going to be more has more ex expectations, but B.J. Thompson can walk into this situation now with a plethora of weapons around him for him just to learn and study around and and really gain traction. And if you look at NFL.com and what they're talking about, his strengths and weaknesses. The strengths are everything the Chiefs need. I mean, like a big-time athletic tester with explosive hips and plus speed, uh, stride link to get on top of protection quickly, possesses physical tools for molding as a rusher, uses agility, length, and burst to finish in the pocket, and speed to track down bull carriers flowing wide. Like, that's everything the Chiefs need because that's not what Carl Loftus necessarily is. And I don't, I don't really believe that's what FAU is going to be on a consistent basis. But his weaknesses, what I love about this, and I don't want to sound overly optimistic here, but it's hard to when you have a guy this talented – in the day three draft, all his weaknesses are things that Joel Colon can fix within a year or two. Uh, you're talking about, uh, according to NFL.com, he needs a year for NFL strength training program to get bigger. He's only 238 pounds, so obviously the Chiefs are going to have to get him to 250 plus. Yeah, yes, and it's the perfect city for it, right? Uh, below average strength and balance and lower half. That's the same thing the FAU was talking about, about how he doesn't utilize his lower half enough. That's something Joe Colon is definitely have his work cut out for, but those are things that can be fixed. And I can go down the list, but the point remains, everything that this guy has as far as a quote-unquote weakness is something that he can, it can end up turning into a strength. I guarantee you, if you look at any of the historic pass rushers through yesteryear that, that have been drafted over the last 10 to 15 years, I guarantee you they have weaknesses. You're like, oh, yeah, initially it doesn't sound so great, but you saw them mold themselves into becoming a, a, a premier pass rusher. Maybe B.J. Thompson becomes there, maybe he doesn't. What I do love the most, though, is that the Chiefs, they drafted a grown-ass man. Dude's 24 years old. I initially thought it was 26 because a couple of these other websites were stating that he was 26 years old. He was born in, uh, I think, March of 
of 97. Come to find out that was wrong. But either way, I mean, the Chiefs have a guy that played for a great established uh, collegiate program in Baylor and then went over there and did what he's doing now, did what he did at Stephen F. Austin. This is a dude that's got plenty of experience, can walk in, and I'm not saying he's going to come in and be a day one wrecker. He probably won't be. It'll probably be 2024. But the fact is there's enough around him right now to learn from, to mold from, and later in next se this next season would not shock me at all if in a week 13 or week 14 game he gets a couple sacks and he starts to establish himself as a guy that's going to become a cornerstone piece to this defense in 2024, 2025, and potentially 2026. Yeah, and, I, and I'm just I'm just happy too because we we tried this a couple of years ago because we we haven't really placed an emphasis on edge rush throughout the draft. We JD and I wanted last year we did the opposite we did we did we did secondary and we fixed the secondary in one off season uh, in one draft. This year it seems like you know we spent three picks on the D line, two on the edge, and then one we're going to talk about the, in in a little bit here. But I think it I think it means that Joshua Kendo was the writing on the wall for him. I think I, th I think he might be gone, and I I, I think Joshua Kendo the, the experiment's over and um, it failed miserably. Yeah. Uh, a guy who just never really panned out. He was awesome coming in from a, going to high school to FSU just didn't didn't pan out. Did pan out in the league, um, but I think with this guy P J Thompson, I think this is what we need. We just need a guy who's a a, a one trick pony. Um, just go get the quarterback, and like you said, I could definitely see him coming in the game and like creating havoc and maybe getting a sack or two at the end at the end of the season this coming year. Like that, that's it. We just need guys who have the threat of doing that, and we haven't had that in such a long time that we can you know have a rotation. And that's what Spags is. Spags is finally getting what he wanted. Uh, what 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 Spags Spags even should have. It's a plethora of defensive ends who can rush the passer. We haven't really had that during the Spags era. Last year is kind of the first year of that, and then this year is uh, um, I think we're seeing that with, with with picks like this and with uh and with King Felix. So that's that, that's my little thing on that. Tasia, what, what were your thoughts on BJ Thompson? It's cool too. We've also adjusted to uh, Chris, because Chris Jones is kind of the um the defense of Mahomes for us, right? So we yes. kind of had to readjust to play money ball on defense too. So like if you if you're resigned to keeping him here, then you have to build around him accordingly, right? And and what did we just do? We just pretty much revamped our entire D line in the past two years. We went from having like a top heavy one with 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 Frank, and then now we're having all the young guys on rookie contracts pretty much, right? Except for right. many many was a great deal. So I'm not even worried about his contract. That's a perfect like second highest paid guy on your team, right. or on your on your D line. I mean, right. Um, he does sound like more uh, Thompson than it sounds more like a, a project. But the beauty of the draft is, it, and uh, Riddick was Riddick was Riddick was talking about this earlier. It, not only who you are, but who you go to matters so much in the draft. Um, you could be a great player if you go to the wrong team. You're, we're never going to see that. Um, we don't need him to come right in and be a, a pass rushing savior. Uh, he's going to be a project. He weighs 238. That's really light. He's not going to play in first and second down for a long time, most likely. Um, he gets eaten up in the, by the run. That's all weight related for the most part. He's just too small. Um, a little stiff, not a lot of bend, but that's some of that's co coachable. He has great straight line speed around a four, five, six. He can keep up with tight ends and running backs. So eventually, if you want to scheme him, fake fake rush, drop on, on a tight end, you, you can cause some problems with your guys. Especially we have we have other guys who can blitz a lot too. So you think of the Sneeds of the world who can blitz, uh, Chanel who can blitz, uh, Gay who, who's uh, uh, you know occasionally good at blitzing. So we have guys you can scheme up some really cool defenses with that. Um, I just think for now he'll be a situational pass rusher, which we can afford because we have a lot of guys. We actually have a good problem for the first time in a long time. Um, and he also made uh, Bruce Feldman's freak list rank 36th uh, because of just like his makeup. I mean, he is, he can put on the weight too. They said he worked really hard to put on like 20, 30 pounds this season. Um, especially when he wanted to get there before the draft and being near 240, 66, good for him, man. And if he can just keep working at that, keep pounding on the barbecue, stay off the vegetables, just eat a lot of the, 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 the cornbread and sides. Um, Carby sides, he's good to go. Um, well, seeing that I'm the local native here, you know, of the three of us, um, yeah. I will personally make sure uh, that that uh, Mr. B.J. Thompson gets plenty of uh, Gates barbecue. So that's gonna be a that's gonna be a real thing. So don't you guys worry. Plan, uh, Lance. <laughs> yeah, I'll put him on the carnivore diet. <laughs> Lance, since you're you're a native in Kansas City, and then B.J. Thompson will be there. Um, I was reading an interview uh, with him uh, from our friends over at uh, NFL Draft Diamonds. 
Uh, his favorite snack food is cheese dip. Uh, most people here in uh, Texas call it queso. What's the best Mexican? Where's the best queso at in Kansas City so our guy BJ Thompson can go? I'm writing that down right now. I think if I was going to go with cheese dip or a place that has something that's close to that, I think that you need it. He needs to hit up some Mexican joints out here. Well, uh, it, spot? I would say I'm giving some good shout outs here. I would say Bonito Mocho Con. I would say El Tico Taco. I would say San Antonio's. I would say, I mean, there's I'm, I'm, people are probably yelling at me right now in Kansas City, but I would say there's there's probably 30 places in Kansas. Like barbecue is clearly God out here. You know, that's that's God's food out here. But Mexican food is a like very like it's like one A one B man. We got some awesome like taco taco trucks. Like just I mean, it's amazing stuff out here. So I I I think the uh, El Pollo Rey would be a really good chicken spot. That's that's one of my favorite places to go to get chicken. Um, so yeah, if he's he's looking for snacks, I mean, there's there's a reason why I'm I'm heavier than he is almost. <laughs> I mean, and I'm like I'm literally a foot shorter than him. So this is perfect. I can I can be his guide uh, to what he needs when it comes to the uh, the consumables. You know, when it comes to you know cultivating mass. So if you had so if you had one Mexican spot for a person to go to Kansas City and get some chips and dip, uh, queso uh, as an appetizer before you get the main course at any Mexican restaurant, which one would it be? You have to choose one. Probably I'd say probably San Antonio's, man. Probably San Antonio's. That's a long way to go for just dip, dude. <laughs> well, I'm saying like it's from my from my my location. <laughs> it's probably it's probably like 12 minutes from here. So like yeah. like look, dude, I'll I'll meet you at Arrowhead and then I'll take you over there. No big deal, man. No big deal. I was making a Texas joke. Sorry. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> oh, real real fast. Um, you signed your boy uh, Nico Remigio from Fresno State, the receiver. What? Yeah. All right. And we signed um, Trey Smith and uh, Morris's ex teammate at Tennessee, Jerome Carbon, another O lineman from that that O line. Like that. Interesting. All right. uh, yeah, Travis, any running backs? Travis Die? No. No, we signed another receiver as well. Uh, oh, I just had it up. We signed Missouri State uh, Ty Scott, and then Purdue cornerback Reese Taylor. That's mm. it so far. Interesting. But I recognize Remigio name right away. Yeah. Um, he, he was actually – he should have been drafted by a lot of people. Yeah, uh, I was a huge fan of his. Uh, if you, I don't know if you guys watched any Fresno State games. I'm a big fan of watching the West Coast. Uh, no, I did not. The West Coast games. You know you know, I am, the degenerate side of me. Um, no, I did not watch any Fresno State games. They're, they, they, were, they were a fun team. And uh, Saints actually drafted their quarterback, uh, uh, Hayner, um, Jacob Hayner, who's actually pretty solid. Uh, but I, I could easily – with their quarterback situation, the, the way it is, still kind of like mm. – um, I could see that guy being something for them, maybe, potentially. Um, uh, but yeah, so um, okay, so BJ Thompson. Uh, one little quick nugget. I, I, not only the queso thing, but um, it's always funny to see how players compare themselves. So when they uh, in the same interview, they asked uh, uh, BJ Thompson uh, if you could compare your play to one player in the NFL, who would it be? I like it that he has the aspirations to, to, to play like a guy like this. I don't see the comparison, but I'm glad he does. Um, I would compare myself to Miles Garrett. We both have big frames, quickness, and have a great ability to turn the corner and get to the quarterback. Getting to the quarterback, he, he definitely has that down. I don't know about the frame of Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett is pretty girthy. I, 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 can I say this? I really enjoy the fact that Veach finds these guys in the late rounds that are that confident. Because you saw last year Isaiah Pacheco talking about taking another grown man's job. And now we have this guy out here saying that he he can see himself being Miles Garrett. I love it. I look, I'm all for you talking that way if you can back it up. So now what BJ Thompson's doing is putting himself in a position where he's like, look, I have to back that up. If I if I'm being asked a question, I answer it honestly. I got to go honestly go out there and, and kick my own ass to make sure that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, did you guys did you guys get grades on this one? Uh, Who's your good. biggest? Go ahead. Sorry. What was your grade for BJ Thompson, uh, Lance? Look, I actually I think this is a B plus, and the biggest reason why is because of the fact of expectation of what he is at his dra at his draft position, what talent level the Chiefs got in that draft position. I think this is uh, there is nothing negative about this pick either. Like there's no like off field concerns. There isn't you know a huge uh, injury risk. You know where he's got a ton of injuries. The mm -hmm. biggest negative on this guy is making sure that he can just get more refined and gain some weight like those are two very fixable problems and when you're getting this guy day three and he's that talented he's that motivated he's got you know the intellect on, on his side and he wants to you know eat 
with Lance Twidwell, I mean, that's about as good as it gets, man. So I think that I think this is definitely a B plus. Uh, I'm going to keep my expectations, like I said, low to what he's going to be in 2023. But I think this guy could be something good in 2024 and 2025. Do we know his circumstances be behind leaving Baylor? Um, based on what I read, uh, they were undisclosed. Uh, well, no, it was, I don't know if you saw, but uh, I hate to interrupt, Marcus, but he was supposedly he had left once the coach was fired. Was it Pruitt? Uh, I cause he was suspended under Matt Rule at Baylor. Yeah, that's what. Okay, and then he, I think the coach. Well, did the coach get fired there when he was there. Uh, well, didn't well, no, he, no. Okay, no, that's oh, that's uh, Matt Rule left. Yeah, Matt Rule left. Okay, so I think that maybe that was the reason why. But he was, he was suspended under Matt Rule. So based on what I what I read, uh, let me see if I can find uh, the article. Um, yeah, Baylor Baylor transfer was suspended for undisclosed reasons for two mm-hmm. games of his last season in Waco. Probably like a curfew thing or something. Yeah, uh, and then he, he's, and he left after that. Um, and then in that same interview that I keep referencing, um, let me see, uh, he talks about it. He t- just touches on it. Um, so overcoming adversity is what defines character. What was the hardest moment in your life to overcome? So this is what he said. Uh, the hardest moment I had to overcome was getting kicked out of Baylor after my sophomore season. I was second on the team in sacks and looking forward to a monster junior season. I went home to Arkansas and almost gave up playing football. Didn't know if I'd ever touch a field again. I was depressed for a while, and I lost all ambition. I sat on my ass for a whole semester, but look at me now. And look at you now, buddy. You're in Chiefs Kingdom, man. So so who knows? If he would have stayed in the football program, he might be like 250 right now instead of 238. Yeah. He, he probably had to like work all that stuff back onto him after being yep. out. I mean, those guys consume an insane amount of calories. So if he was just like – depressed and not doing anything who knows how much weight he lost in that process true yeah and then you're talking about a guy that has redeemable qualities too because he worked his ass back into football i mean like he, like he was saying he was literally he didn't know he was going to touch a football field again so this guy's got that want to and i love that about him out of a, out of a day three pick yeah he blocked two kicks with baylor too that year they said. damn I mean, that's dude, a great detail i love that <laughs> i mean he, he, he's a long dude and seeing some of his uh because he's a track and basketball guy too seeing some of his footage of him coming off the ball it literally looks like he's coming off the, the blocks. Uh, mm. right. it, it, it's honestly unreal. You look at some of his uh, some of his highlights of him coming off the ball. It looks like a dude just coming off the freaking blocks for a 100-meter dash. But Yeah. Uh, Tasia, great. I'll give it a B. B, all right. It's solid B. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, Subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.